Hi, I'm Bruce Nixon, CEO of Holocentric. I'm going to be talking to you about how we help organisations to undertake significant business transformations, often involving the use of or implementation of new IT systems to help the organisation perform more effectively. Our customers, whether they be in airlines such as Qantas and Cathay Pacific, government organisations like the Australian Taxation Office, IP Australia and the Department of Human Services, or organisations in any other industry achieve a much higher success rate than is the norm. In an industry where the failure rate is typically about 70% for large-scale IT systems implementations, we do that by capturing the corporate DNA of the business. Let me now take you through the various phases and show you how we address those particular issues. Typically we get involved with organisations because they're trying to determine the requirements for those systems. A necessary starting point to be able to get a system correctly configured. Those requirements they're looking to uh, build by asking the business what they do, what they need, and representing that in the form of some specialist product. It might be a requirements management tool, or it might be something more simplistic like Microsoft's Excel. A means of gathering information, uh, categorising that information, sorting it, filtering it, and providing that out to different people who are involved within the project so they can build the systems. After the requirements stage, we go through to design. In the design stage, we need to elaborate on those requirements and start to determine how we're going to satisfy those. If we're going out to market for a new application, a package, there might be an RFT involved. Either way, we need to get some more detail about how things are going to be uh, specified. And that requires some description of the needs in a form that external parties can understand. Typically, products such as Microsoft Word using some templates uh, to, to represent those designs and RFT requirements are applied at this stage. We then go on to the next stage, which might be the configuration of the system or it might be the uh, actual construction of the system if it's a bespoke development. Again, different tools are introduced at this point and there might be tools based on UML. What we're doing within each of these phases of the life cycle is translating. We're translating information that's gathered in the requirement stage to the information required in design through to the configuration stage of these systems. We keep going, we translate that down to the next stage, which is the testing stage. And in testing, we might have some specialist tools, HP Quality Centre or other tools that are assisting the organisation to capture the test cases, capture the test results, the scenarios, to make sure that the system that's being configured is going to meet the requirements of the business. Quite often we come to a point where we do not actually meet the requirements of the business. We may meet the stated requirements, but not necessarily the business needs. When we define requirements, we typically do that in a fashion that allows the IT people to design and configure systems according to those requirements. So they are systems requirements rather than business needs. Yet we ask business people to sign them off and agree that yes, this is a, an accurate representation of what their business requires to perform more effectively. So we have to go back and rework that. And we take the output of the testing and go back and modify the requirements because they weren't accurate in the first place. They were incomplete, we're missing some. There was discrepancies between those requirements. So we go back and rework those and then go through and translate that into the design and translate that into the UML, translate that into the test criteria so that we can determine whether we now have the right fit for the system. We can overcome some of these issues by looking at the as-is process and we can look at the to-be processes, i.e. how do you work now and how can you work more effectively in the future through the as-is and the to-be states. 
and we introduced yet more tools to assist in this process. And Microsoft's Visio and other process mapping drawing tools are often applied at these stages of the life cycle. So now we can get an understanding of how things work in the organisations, how they may work more effectively in the future, and then we translate that into the Excel spreadsheets, we translate that into the Word documents, to the UML tools, the testing tools, so we get a better handle on what happens in the organisation. In each of these stages, lots of translation, lots of specialist tools required for an organisation to get to the stage ready for implementation. So in the implementation stage, we then have to go through and look at the training needs for the people who are going to be using the systems, ultimately resulting in a new operational state. Once again, we introduce new tools into the training stage. Tools such as PowerPoint, which represent how people need to go through a learning experience to be able to apply the new processes, the new systems, the new responsibility sets to the work they perform. Within any project life cycle, things rarely stay still. In the business world, things change. So we need to accommodate changes in various stages of the life cycle, even if we get an accurate understanding. The scope of the project may change. It may increase. It may decrease. There may be economic circumstances that change that are outside of the influence of the organisation. There may be increased compliance obligations. There may be some other business change that needs to be incorporated. So we need to be able to find some way of incorporating change through any stage of the life cycle and updating the documentation to make sure we get the result that was expected that is needed for that organisation to be more effective. So there's lots of problems, lots of costs, lots of wasted money, high risk and delayed projects. And that's on the record as far as the IT systems failures. The holocentric approach is quite different. We gather information in one repository that covers all phases of the life cycle. Yet we cater to the different views of people. So the information that the business people need when we talk about business processes is quite different from the needs of people who are configuring systems from an IT perspective. It's different from those people going through a training experience. It's different from those people who need to reference this on an ongoing basis as far as their standard operating procedures. So we provide multiple views of information so we can cater the specialist needs of these people involved in the life cycle but with a consistent, coordinated set of information that can be used across the life cycle. We assist these people to collaborate more effectively through this life cycle, through the collaboration engine that is part of Modelpedia. So information gathered in the early stages can be referenced right through, it can be reused in later stages in the life cycle, and people can collaborate and to get a better understanding of how things work today and how they might work more effectively in the future. We populate this through our holocentric modeler product and this enables us to build a comprehensive model of the organisation. Through that model we're able to cater for those different views that people have. We gather that information at each stage of the life cycle and we build upon that to build a better representation and a consistent, complete understanding as to how that organisation works. In some cases, we might bring in frameworks that represent best practice for a certain industry and have those available as a model and a starting point for the organisation. And those frameworks can be referenced and built upon to be customised to that individual organisation's needs. So Modelpedia is a means for organisations to more effectively understand what they do. Modelpedia might be hosted in-house in the organisation. It may be hosted on their behalf through a software as a service offering out in the cloud somewhere. And it is a consistent means across all stages of the life cycle. Through Modelpedia and Holocentric Modeler, we need to cater for the specialist needs in each stage of the life cycle and we may need to integrate with specialist tools that might be used, such as uh, Hewlett-Packard's Quality Centre product, 
in the testing stages. So we can integrate the specialist tools but provide a consistent representation for how things work in the organisation. Furthermore, this lives on beyond the project. If we look at the traditional approach, all the tools that are involved help to implement the system, but they don't provide any assistance at all in an ongoing uh, operation of the business. They are a cost for the business in the project. A high cost, high risk, highly redundant information involved with the various tool sets involved. Holocentric's approach is to have one set of information, a collaborative engine, which becomes an asset for the business. That asset is the result of the investment through the various stages of the life cycle, whereby we build a more complete understanding as to how things work through the business. Furthermore, we provide the means for an organisation to continually improve by referencing information in that asset, which represents the business, collaborating more effectively on the way we might improve the way the business performs, and implementing incremental or transformational change through the business. In conclusion, at Holocentric we help increase the success rate of IT systems implementations and business transformation projects, as has been experienced by many of our customers such as Qantas and Western Power. Through a single repository that represents the corporate DNA of your organisation, we help to reduce the risk through the unnecessary translation between the different phases of the project. We help to increase the effectiveness through collaboration, through that single repository. We help to reduce the cost through the reuse of information through the various phases of the project. And we reduce the time frame through the elimination of unnecessary rework. Thank you.